All right, so hi, my name is uh, John Farrell, and I'll be talking about implementing AMD MXGPU uh, with Zen. Um, first off, I just want to say this is more of just uh, my story and uh, the struggles I went through doing it rather than a technical overview of the technology in Zen. Um, so I won't be digging too deep, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of the level of effort I went through and um, what it would be like to get this up and running. So for a quick overview of what I'll be saying is I'll give you a quick background on me and then uh, the first couple slides will just be about uh, set up on the host and on the VM. And then uh, I'll get really more into my story, which is in the difficulties part. And then I'll talk a little bit about performance and what I learned and where I see the future of the technology going. So currently I've been at AAS for three years which is kind of crazy to me. Time just kind of flew by. <laughs> and uh, during my time there, I've worked mostly with in-guest uh, development, a little bit about our build system, which is o open embedded Yocto. And, uh, and then pretty much just now got into trying to implement AMD on Zen uh, for our OpenXT derivative. Um, and so clearly I don't have too much experience before this in Zen and we'll uh, talk about a little about that later. So first off, this is a Git repository for uh, everything MXGPU. Uh, this is set up for, uh, with AMD and this contains the GIM driver which is their Linux kernel driver and it also contains like documentation on how to set everything up and uh, they have kernel patches as well. Uh, that's all contained there. Uh, the biggest thing in the readme that I wanted to point out was that the expected Ubuntu version is 16.04 and with that the kernel version is 4.4, all being fairly old and uh, they, de they recommend the default Zen packages for that distribution as well, which uh, turned out to be fairly old. Uh, so the initial setup, um, aside from installing uh, Ubuntu, would just be to install Zen. In this particular case, I decided originally to install the AppGet packages, as the README suggested. And um, then install the kernel patches. Uh, for me, I chose to install Ubuntu 17.10. The kernel uh, was not 4.4, and so the patches did not apply directly. However, um, it wasn't too bad to uh, manually uh, put in the patches, so uh, not too bad there. And then basic stuff like blacklisting AMD GPU so it didn't bind to the MXGPU card and enabling IO, MMMU, and installing GIM. Um, all pretty, pretty uh, simple and goes through in the setup guide. Then we have the guest setup, which again is the same document and it lists all the different guests. I went with Windows since it was easier and uh, basically this is my first time installing Zen, so it's my first time installing a pure Zen uh, uh, VM. So I learned that and how to set up networking and such. Um, so I got the guest IP, installed VNC, um, and then downloading the driver was pretty much, they had a page that when you went to AMD MXGPU, they would have KVM open source, which had all the resources you needed, including the GitHub page and the drivers. That's no longer there. Um, so now it just takes you to the support 
for their driver section to download. Uh, so now it's a little bit more on you to know what your device is, go to that driver page, and install uh, your pass-through drivers in the guest. And then we're pretty much ready to pass through the, uh, the device, the vGPU, right? Well, <laughs> first time I tried, I, uh, the only thing that would come up is a black screen. And I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know if the VM was on. I didn't know if it was working at all. So the first thing I did was uh, use the ZenBridge and network sniff to see if there was any network traffic at all, which there wasn't. So I, I kind of assumed that the VM was just frozen. Now, after some talk with uh, some of my coworkers, we came to the conclusion that the problem might be the version of Zen, which was 4.9 through the app get packages and 4.10 in baseline. All this was done uh, last year. So I think some of the patches in Kemu um, in 4.10 versus 4.9 were necessary for this to work. So I had to learn how to install Zen from Tree, which was a whole different experience for me. Um, and uh, part with just in, uh, building Zen, which actually didn't go too bad, uh, was installing Zen and getting it to boot. And that, playing with the, uh, the boot order, I mean the, um, the target images, was something I'd never done before, so it was interesting. But again, not too bad. There are a lot of stuff online for that. What was surprising to me was that something that I'd never seen in a lot of the guides was the Zen modules. The, the Linux kernel modules weren't started by default. And I probably spent about four or five days trying to figure out why none of my VMs were booting. And uh, yeah, so who knew you needed the Zen kernel modules? Um, and then building my first Linux kernel, uh, figuring out the kconfig and stuff like that, like I said, a lot of the guides were online, um, but uh, I've run into some issues, especially with every time a new Zen version and a new kernel version, I would try and I would get the same result of a black screen on the VM. Um, I pretty much installed four or five different versions of Ubuntu, all with like one or two versions of Zen and one or two kernels. So this was just mayhem at, at this point. And, uh, Eventually, I got to the point of passing in the vGPU and getting a blue screen, which was progress. So <laughs> I was pretty happy. Um, I don't remember the specifics of the blue screen. Um, I didn't save any of the, the data, unfortunately. And like I said, it's been a year. Um, however, I do remember at that point, I ended up putting it down for about a week or two. And when I came back to it, there was a new a uh, GIM driver and a new in-guest driver. And after installing those, rebooting, and it not working, I went into safe mode and uh, removed the driver. And when I booted, I guess the right driver was in the INF store. And uh, finally, we got it working. Um, so for performance was the next thing we wanted to see. Well, how, how good is this going to run? And uh, unfortunately, right after I got it working, about a week or two later, I moved to work full-time remote. So I no longer had access to the hardware anymore. And at that point, no one was really working on the machine. And we started working on future uh, stuff. So I don't have exact metrics. Um, these metrics that I have, um, we use Unigen Heavy a lot in our uh, benchmarking. And so this uh, MXGPU 4 gigabyte is something that both I remember and also we did recent tests on our OpenXT derivative with the card. And I w I again, I didn't get exact numbers. So these are lo low ball figures. But they give you a good idea of where it is in ballpark range. And uh, this benchmark is from online. It's pretty much the only benchmark I could find with four gigabytes of memory so I could compare it more accurately. And 
even with a little bit of um, taking the numbers with a grain of salt, you can see that the card itself split up into four different vGPUs, so four systems running what is essentially equivalent to the current gen GPUs is pretty good. Um, so with that in mind, um, we'll move into basically just to review what I learned. And so pretty much what I learned was everything having to do with Zen, uh, how to build it, how to work with it, how to make VMs. It was, it was a wild ride, but it was good. I learned a lot. And um, working with the Linux kernel and um, a lot of like really small stuff that a lot of people probably take for granted um, that someone new just obviously just has to pick up on. And I think the biggest thing for me was that I, I expected the AMD uh, code and the drivers to pretty much work out of the box, which was not the case, clearly. <laughs> um, so that was a big like eye opener to me, like, oh, AMD, maybe any company for that matter, you know, we're all human, so not everything's gonna work right away. Um, and then for the future, I think one of the biggest things I'm excited for, um, this is cloud server base, um, is Google Stadia. Now, I don't know that they're using this, uh, this technology in particular, but uh, the reason this excites me is because it's pretty much perfect for what this does. And it's um, Google Stadia is a gaming streaming service. And it pretty much runs the game on their servers and then streams the video back to you. And that's perfect for vGPUs since you can just give a GPU to any user that you need. Um, and then for the Zen users and just in general Zen platform, I think this technology unfortunately isn't very affordable for an individual since they did not elect to have active cooling on their cards. So you're pretty much not building a machine, um, you're, you're building a server. And you know, that could get quite expensive for just one individual. But on the other side, companies who want to use this technology that have multiple employees that are going to work with accelerated graphics, um, you could run a system that you know, uh, four or five, even up to like eight accelerated graphics with fairly good performance on multiple systems. So I think right there um, with like testing, is pretty good uh, indication that this technology has a future. Um, and then, uh, <sighs> I forgot what I was going to say. So I guess we'll just go to questions. <laughs> yes. Um, are, you, are you aware of the QEMU patches you need to make it work properly? Um, so I like. I haven't looked at anything in a very long time, so no. Okay, the problem is that the, uh, the Fire Pro 150, there's a Tommy chipset. Yeah. Um, one of the VF bars is not safe to access. Okay. So each of the VFs just e echoes through the VF bar. So if you bring up two VMs at the same time, they will okay. cross talk. Ah, uh, okay. That is one of the things um, I actually forgot to mention is um, we are looking into the security of the card as well, <laughs> and uh, that's definitely an issue. You don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you need key patches because you have uh, basically the gym driver has to arbitrate one of the bars; it has to emulate it. Okay. Um, and then you will run into the secondary problem, which is if you bring two VMs up at the same time, one of them will probably blue screen on you. Okay. Because it will TDR basically. Yeah. Something that, there's something called exclusive mode, and you okay. need to complete your operations within, I believe, 500 microseconds. Now, you, you actually just reminded me that the blue screen was a TDR. So, yeah, so uh, we, 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 we support this in product for citrus type players, so okay. <laughs> we're aware of the pain. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be perfectly honest, all 
vendors are equally bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, getting working drivers, having hardware that doesn't suck. I, AMD was just the only ones that uh, had open source, I think, that was yeah, really the, the biggest. The, when, when we did the integration initially, the Dune driver was not open source, but then they subsequently open sourced it. Okay. Uh, so yes, you have all the bits you need. Yeah. It's not the only open source one, because the Intel GPG is right. completely open source. Right. Uh, I think the biggest issue with that is they're, they haven't come out yet with the actual full card, so yeah, the performance is not, yeah. 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 Uh, or, or, or nothing for that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the NVIDIA one is just ludicrously expensive. And not open source in at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Has Citrix done any work um, with the NX GPU V240 at all? Um, they, uh, AMD don't want to support it. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Yes, we'd like to, but uh, no, but they, they refuse to, uh, to give us the bits we need. So basically, you, you, you've got Tonga, and that's it. OK. All right. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to come up at some other time. Thank you.